Well, I know there were quite a few folks hoping this would happen, and hot on the heels of the force feedback release for IndyCar Racing 2, I've been able to put together an app to add force feedback to Grand Prix 2, Micropro's 1996 legendary Formula 1 sim. This is the X86 version of Grand Prix 2 Hatcher's patch that allows you to play Grand Prix 2, which was originally a DOS game, on modern Windows computers with modern controls and uh, lots of other nice quality of life features. I've made a few videos about this in the past, but one of the main features missing for a lot of folks that enjoy driving these old sims, but maybe with modern hardware, is force feedback. And so with the help of Hatcher themselves, I've been able to make a little app that adds force feedback or attempts to add force feedback to Grand Prix 2 in a very similar way that I did with IndyCar Racing 2. And so what I've created here is this little companion app that you run alongside a GP2 x86 version, which interacts with your wheel and translates data from the game into forces for the wheel. Uh, and I've put it on the screen here just so that you can see it, but you don't have to have it visible. And uh, what it's doing is reading the forces that are on the front wheels. You can see the uh, latitude and longitudinal forces, and then using that to, to inversely add force feedback. So if we go... Uh, up here into a right-handed corner, you're going to get forces pushing the wheel the opposite way uh, and vice versa. If you touch curbs, you'll get some forces that shake the wheel around. If you go off the track into the grass, you'll get a lot of forces. What? You get a lot of forces and spin out, uh, which is quite easy to do in, in GP2. And so by reading these forces, you can add pretty realistic force feedback effects to the game. And in fact, sitting here on Hangar Straight, if we turn the wheel a little bit and start accelerating, you'll see it'll right itself. Uh, as you would expect, as the car begins to accelerate, there's some straight line momentum in the wheel, I guess, that keeps the wheels pointed straight. Uh, and you really just get the forces when you're turning in the corners and things. It brings a really interesting aspect to, to Grand Prix 2. Uh, the game itself, I would say, is still pretty easy to spin out. You're really on a knife's edge, but it doesn't feel inappropriate for cars of this era. These are 1994 Grand Prix cars, and uh, they're very, very twitchy. There were a lot of issues that season, obviously, with how difficult the cars were to drive, so maybe it is accurate. It's not as easy feeling or natural feeling I guess you'd say as as I thought IndyCar 2 was once we added force feedback to that but um, with, with this it, it's definitely a, an interesting feeling Grand Prix 2 has this kind of bouncy feeling to it uh, especially with curbs and things like that where you can really feel it translated to the wheel feels a little bit different than maybe modern simulations of the same cars would feel but for the physics data that Grand Prix 2 outputs it, it feels like you're feeling what's going on with the car and uh, in some ways it makes it easier to drive in other ways it maybe doesn't make it that much different overall but it's certainly cool to feel the forces on the wheel as you drive around like with the indycar racing 2 force feedback patch uh, this is very much an amateur coding effort and although i've had pretty good success with folks being able to use the indycar 2 one uh, and this uses a lot of the same code under the hood and does really a lot of the same things i can't predict exactly how it'll interact with every single different device and things out there i'm not an experienced programmer lots of duct tape and workarounds to get things to work so your mileage may vary and that's all to say that uh, you should be careful trying it i guess try it on low force feedback first and make sure things feel all right before you start cranking it up and all that please be careful i guess i'd say and so to get the force feedback patch running, you first need the latest version of x86 GP2, which is available over at Hatcher's site. It has some updated code in it that allows me to do what I'm doing to create forces out of the data. And then you can download the force feedback patch itself from my GitHub, which I'll put in the description of this video. This has just some information and installation instructions and things, which are always good to read. But the download itself is over in the releases on the right side. So if you click there, this will always give you the latest version as I continue to update it and make little tweaks uh, we can download right now beta 031 and so once the download completes there's just two files there's the gp2 force feedback exe and the uh, ffb ini you can place these files anywhere you could put them in the directory for grand prix 2 or in their own folder it doesn't matter where they are but to get started you just need to open up the force feedback ini in a text editor this has the configuration settings itself for how you get it set up the main one is the device setting just like the indycar racing 2 app you need to put the name of your device here that you uh, want the forces to go to 
The name itself should match exactly how the device appears in the game controllers panel in Windows, so mine is Fanatec Wheel. You can also use the index number as well, which I added to the IndyCar Racing 2 one not that long ago, but uh, for me that would be one, two, three, four, five. So, so in the INI file, I can either put uh, the name of the device or I could put a five here since it's the fifth controller. Either way should work uh, and link it to my wheel. From there, there's a couple other settings you can tweak. Force is the, the percentage of total force that you want it to output. I would start low with this uh, just to make sure nothing crazy happens. I've got mine set on 60%. I'm running my wheel at six newtonmeters of force, uh, if that gives you any approximation for what it's at, but everybody's gonna tweak that a little bit differently. You can also add a dead zone if you need to, uh, to, to just dull the forces in the middle. Uh, I also added an option to invert the forces if they're backwards. If the wheel is pulling you in directions instead of pushing against you, that means you probably need to in invert them. And then there is an option to limit the forces, reduce the, the rate at which it tries to update the wheel. I would keep this off unless you, uh, you have some issues with it oscillating a lot or maybe not working at all on your specific wheel. Below that in the effects mix, I've added a few options to tweak the forces themselves and how, how the wheel actually calculates them. The constant scale force is the main one that actually uh, corresponds to the weight of the car and everything. So I'd recommend keeping that one on and keeping that probably at 100% you can scale it with the main force toggle. But below that we have braking scale and so there are longitudinal forces, the forwards and backwards forces on the wheels as well. So when you push the brake and maybe even lock a tire, you'll feel the wheel kind of pull in correspondence to that. So if you wanna make that a little bit stronger or weaker, you can edit the percentage here. 50% for me feels, I can still feel the braking, but it doesn't really uh, mess up the forces in, in another way. But you could even turn that off at zero if you wanted to. There's also a general damper, which really only affects the forces at, at stopped or very slow speeds, which just gives a little weight on the wheel, make it not feel like it's floating. So uh, you can either turn that off if you want or, or scale them uh, downwards or upwards if you wanted to, to have more force there. So once you've got the INI settings set up, you can start uh, X86 GP2 here, and that'll pop that up in a window. And so once x86 gp2 is running you can start the force feedback app uh, from wherever it's installed either in the same folder or not uh, and you'd want to run it as administrator and that'll pop up a window you'll get the window with the telemetry data on it although you don't need to have you know this showing in order for it to work but it will help you understand if it's actually working or not and so once you load into a session you should see the telemetry come alive if i move the wheel to the left and to the right the steering wheel angle and things is being reported and uh, if we start rolling away we'll see the tire data start coming in and at that point you really should start getting some forces on the wheel itself and uh, can go driving and see what it feels like now if at any point you want to make a tweak to things you can close the uh, force feedback app and open up the FFB INI file, tweak a few settings, save it, and then reopen the FFB app. You don't have to shut down the game every time or anything like that. And uh, one thing you'll see once you've run it for the first time is the log file, which gets generated, which is just gonna tell you everything that it did to connect to the game. And so if you are having any issues with it, uh, this can be super helpful for myself to get just so that I can see what might've been going on and, and uh, what the issue might be. Now, a lot of how this feels is gonna be dependent on the wheel that you're using and how you have it set up with X86 GP2. These are my settings for my Club Sport DD running at six newtonmeters. Got the sensitivity set to 540. And if we go into X86 GP2 itself and go to the control settings, this is something you can tweak in accordance with the max lock that you have set here. So depending on how much rotation you have with your wheel, you may need to raise and lower the max lock to get the wheel to be uh, snappy enough for you. I found with 540 and 24 degrees, I can get around the hairpins and things at Monaco and some of the other tracks, uh, but it still feels snappy enough uh, when I'm just driving regular. So I'm excited for folks to try this out. I know Grand Prix 2 itself is quite popular now with the x86 version. And uh, for a lot of folks, the missing force feedback was tough to adjust to. So I hope this helps some of you out there just enjoy this old game uh, and the x86 version of it even a little bit more. I'm sure there'll be plenty of updates to come as more folks test it and I can tweak things. But at this point, I know there's been folks with Logitech wheels, Moza wheels, Thrustmaster wheels that this has worked for. And it uses, like I said, a lot of the same code as the IndyCar Racing 2 version. So if your wheel worked for that or somebody else you know, that has the same wheel as you was able to get that to work, it's likely that this one will work as well. And I'll continue to try to squash any bugs that people report to me and get this working well for everybody. So hope folks enjoy. I know I'm about ready to hang up my amateur developer hat 
and go back to doing some actual racing for a little while. But it's been a lot of fun to work on these projects and, and do something to contribute and add uh, something that I know a lot of folks wanted in these old games. But I hope it works just as well and is as enjoyable for everybody else out there as it is for myself to now have force feedback in some of these old games. So let me know how it goes for you out there. I appreciate folks tuning in for, for these uh, projects that I've been working on. But like I said, I'm excited to get back to some racing here soon. So until then, this is GP Laps, and I'll see you all again next time.